Hey guys, this is John, and welcome to a new series called Member Game Analysis. So the premise for this series is that there's a thread on the chess.com forum that goes back, I think, about five years. This thread has been around for a while. And people can post their games that they played on chess.com or elsewhere, and masters will analyze them. And Danny Wrench, one of the chess.com head honchos and my uh, constant chess rivals opponent, he's the guy who started that thread. And he actually approached me recently asking if I would be willing to analyze some of these games and post them on my channel for the benefit of you guys and also for the benefit of the chess.com users and the players who submitted these games. So that's what I'm going to do from time to time. And this is the very first game I looked at. It was submitted by the user playing black in this game, the user Champ, and their opponent was Vorkuta. So white was rated 1565 and black was rated 1578 so pretty equal in strength and one thing i want to mention before i get going is that i analyzed this game without the benefit of the engine i resisted the temptation to turn on the engine and see what it has to say so you're hearing my unadulterated comments just as i an international master would interpret this game as a third party to it and i don't want to go on a rant about the benefits of avoiding using the engine at first, but if you're looking to get better, you should only use the engine after you've formulated some thoughts and opinions about whatever game or position you're looking at. I think that's crucial, and if you don't already do it, you should try to make a habit of that. So let's get going. This game opened with e4 from Vorkutza. Black played e5. White played d4. Black took on d4. And white played c3. So this is the Danish Gambit. White is offering a pawn to speed up their development. Note that white could recover the pawn with queen takes d4 if they like. And then it's kind of a reverse Scandinavian. Maybe it's an opening I should try, who knows. Although white has already put the pawn on e4, so I kind of question how great that is for white. And theory says black has equality in that case. But c3, on the other hand, ensures that we're going to get a fight right from the get-go. Because white is offering the c3 pawn, and their hope is that black munching on all these pawns will... Uh, cause black to fall behind in development, and white can launch a quick attack. So already here on move three, black has a choice. And I've formulated this rule a few times on my channel, and I've talked about this, where when you face a gambit, it's often smart to take the first pawn that's offered, but don't take the second pawn. Okay, so in this case, black has already taken the pawn on d4. They could go and take the pawn on c3, but in my opinion, it's easier to decline it. And if black is looking to do so, two moves that are interesting and one in which is a, a theoretical equalizer here are d5 and queen e7. Uh, d5 is a move that for quite a while has been known to be fine for black. Black immediately counterattacks the pawn on e4. And the line from here usually goes e takes d5, queen takes d5, c takes d4, knight c6. Black generates pressure on d4. Knight f3, defending, bishop g4, pinning, bishop e2, bishop b4, check, knight c3, and now bishop takes f3, bishop takes f3, and queen c4, which conveniently stops white from castling because the queen is interfering. And there's some theory from here, but black scores well. The position is roughly equal. So that is one line that black can employ against the Danish gambit if they want a no-nonsense equalizer. And I also read a, an interesting new book, well, it's been out of, about a year, by Victor Bolagon, Grandmaster Bolagon. And he analyzes the move queen e7 in that book, which counterattacks the e4 pawn. And I won't go into the analysis of that, but that's another move you can look into if you want to surprise an opponent who plays the Danish Gambit. However, in this game, the user champ decided to take the pawn on c3, so they just accepted white's gambit. Now, white could play knight takes c3, but the truly enterprising way to play this position is what Vorkota did. They played bishop c4. So, not wasting a time on recovering the pawn, they're actually offering another pawn to speed up development. And champ, they kept munching, so c takes b2. Now white really must regain the pawn, so bishop takes b2. And we notice that white has this lovely pair of bishops bearing down on these complementary diagonals. So even though black is up two pawns, they must proceed with caution because they have no pieces out, whereas white already has 
these two bishops, which could wreak havoc if black makes the slightest error. But to champ's credit, this player seemed to know what to do, and champ played d5, offering a pawn back. So this looks pretty strange to the uninitiated, but in this line, uh, this is something good for black to do because they don't mind giving one pawn back if it means getting some pieces out. So in playing d5, they open up the light square bishop, and they also put white to a decision. How should white take this pawn? And I'm going to ask you that question. So if you want to pause your video and figure out how white should recapture of these three available captures on d5, you can go ahead and do so now. Okay, so white should take with the bishop on d5. Taking with the bishop would keep open the bishop's diagonal towards that pawn on f7. And now from here, there's a line that goes knight f6. And white has this nifty reply, bishop takes f7 check, a tactic everyone should be aware of, trying to deflect the king away from the queen. And now after queen takes d8, it looks like black's losing. But in fact, black has a way to recover the queen. Bishop b4 check. Discovered attack on the queen on d8. And then the line proceeds queen d2, blocking the check. Bishop takes d2 check. Knight takes d2. And if we count the material, we notice that it is equal now. Uh, with some interesting majorities. White has a 4 versus 2 majority on the king side, but black has a majority over here, 3 versus white's 1. And once again, this is a position that theory has rendered a verdict on and it's about equal so bishop takes d5 is the way to go if white wants to keep the initiative going and not uh, get a worse position out of this whole gambit queen takes d5 wouldn't make much sense because black could swap queens and again blacks up material so they're perfectly happy to do that that would increase the safety of the black king but unfortunately for vorkuta they took the wrong way they took with the pawn which is probably the weakest of the three possible captures. Uh, queen takes d5, also pretty bad, but e takes d5, definitely the wrong move because it blocks this bishop. Suddenly this bishop on c4 is feeling unhappy. It does, it does not have an open diagonal to work with. It's not attacking f7. So here, black just developed. They played knight f6. White played knight e2. White's just getting ready to castle. I think they avoided f3 because they might have been a little bit worried about bishop g4 in the future. So knight e2. Black played bishop d6. And white castled. Now we reach an in interesting moment in the game where black has a typical tactic available. A typical tactical sequence. And I'm going to tell you the move that black played. And if you'd like to pause your video and try to analyze this move and decide whether it works or not, or whether you would do it, you can do so. So the move is bishop takes h2 check. Bishop takes h2 check. So two questions. One, if black plays bishop takes h2 check, how do you think the game will go? And two, would you do this sacrifice? Yes or no? So if you'd like to pause your video and figure that out, you can do so now. All right, so as we'll see, bishop takes h2 produces some unclear complications. And in fact, I don't know if there's a clear answer to whether this is correct or not. My feeling is it's slightly incorrect to play this. And Champ included a couple notes here. And they said, this is quoting them, Haha, I'll make this bishop sack whenever I can, even if it's wrong. So Champ seemed to know when playing this game that this bishop sacrifice might not be sound, but they went for it anyways. Possibly this was slightly due to the time control. This was a 10-minute game with uh, no increment once again. So maybe black felt like even if this is unsound, white might, ha might not have time to figure it out entirely. So let's just go for it and see what happens. I think it's possible for black to just play a simple move like castles, get their king to safety, and then focus on development. And in the context of the position, that might make more sense because black is up a pawn. So for them to take a risk and make like a speculative sacrifice when they're already ahead of clean pawn doesn't make a whole lot of sense. So the safer way would definitely be castles and 
just try to consolidate that extra pawn. But bishop takes h2 check was played. White took the bishop. And black played knight g4. So this is the device that black will employ after the Greek gift sacrifice. They bring the knight in, and the queen is ready to come to h4. Hence, white has to come out with their king to g3. If they go back to g1, then queen h4 is a big problem. Black is threatening queen h2 checkmate. And a line that I just looked at was rook e1, trying to allow the king to flee. Queen takes f2 check. King h1. Queen back to h4 check. King g1. Queen h2 check. King f1. And now, at the very least, black has knight e3 check. I didn't quite see a, a mate or anything black could achieve here, but knight e3 check should be plenty good because it forks the king and the queen. And black will be up too much material. So after knight g4 check, white must come out with their king. And if you do a Greek gift sacrifice, this is a line that you should be aware of. You should be alert to the fact that your opponent might just bring their king out to either the third or the sixth rank, depending upon what color you are. And that might be the best defense. Note that king h3 wouldn't make much sense because that would walk straight into the line of fire of this bishop on c8. So Vorkuta played the correct move. They went king g3. And here, champ followed up with queen g5. So black is not checking white, but they are setting up some discoveries with this knight on g4. So now knight e3 check is the principal threat. And that would be an attack on the white queen. So here's another question. White to move after queen g5. You know what, what black is threatening. If you want to pause your video and try to figure out white's best defense, try to do that now. So white to move, what is white's best defense? All right, so when I analyzed this, I thought that f4 was white's best chance. This move attacks the black queen, and it also gives white's king a, a bit more space to run. It can go to f3, and it'll have that pawn on f4 as a buffer uh, from checks that might be given from like the f-file or maybe even from e5 in the future. f4 is a helpful move, and it kind of pushes black back a little bit. Now, black would probably want to move their queen to g6, which maintains discovered attack threats. But after king f3, white is escaping a bit. Black can play knight h2 check here, which forks the king and the rook. But after king f1, and then knight takes f1, and let's say king takes f1, we have a highly unbalanced position where white has two minor pieces, but black has a rook and, what, two pawns? So two minor pieces versus rook and two pawns. Black is underdeveloped here. Uh, it's hard to say exactly who's better. I think in a faster game, I would prefer white in the two pieces, especially since white has these bishops, and even though this bishop is somewhat blocked, I could envision white's queen coming up to d4 and maybe creating a battery against g7. The computer might say otherwise, but I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to give the cop-out response and say that the position is unclear. So this might be best play for both sides after the queen g5 move is played. I think it's imperative that white play f4 and try to kick back that queen. But... Unfortunately for white, they chose the wrong move here. I believe they saw the threat of knight e3, but they just dealt with it in the wrong way. So Vorkuta played queen d2, getting the queen off of the d1 square and offering a trade. But there's a nice continuation for black here. And it is knight e3 check, as champ played. Discovered attack on the white king. White can't really come back to h2. Because if they do, then knight takes f1 check would be a deadly fork on the king on h2 and the queen on d2. So white's hand is forced. They played king f3. And now we can see the effect of white having the pawn on f2 rather than out on f4. Uh, it's much more exposed. And black is able to now bring a piece in to play with check. So bishop g4, developing a new piece. And here, white has a choice once again. So we can play either... King g3 or king e4. Note that white cannot take the knight because it's guarded by the queen. So if you would like to pause your video and figure out which one of those two moves white should play, you can do so now. So king g3 or king e4. All 
All right, so this was kind of a softball question. Not very hard to uh, figure out which one's best. White should definitely play king e4, despite the risks, because king g3 is refuted too easily. There might even be some checkmating nets here, but just a simple move in reply would be knight takes f1. And we've got another fork on the king and the queen. Even if black doesn't happen to give... Actually, is that checkmate right away? I think that's checkmate. Yeah, the king doesn't have any squares. So, <laughs> yeah, this is immediate mate. Uh, but even if it weren't, just winning the queen would be more than enough. So white's king is driven out into the great wide open after king e4. And now champ is going to continue the attack. So they played bishop f5 check. And here's another question for you. So white to move. We can either go back to f3. We can go to d4. Or we can go to e5. Remember, the knight is still immune. And d3 is covered by the light square bishop. So of those three squares, what do you think is white's best bet? So f3, d4, or e5. If you want to pause your video and figure that out, you can do so now. So first of all, king e5 looks way too dangerous. Not only are we in our opponent's half of the board now with our king, but also you're setting yourself up for discoveries with this bishop. Uh, and also knight takes c4 check would just fork the king and the queen. So that's a disaster for white. King d4 is the best move. I think white has to get their king out of dodge and try to seek safety on the queen side. And after king d4, it's pretty sketchy for white still, but they might have a chance to like somehow hold out here. Uh, I think I analyzed queen g4 check from here. f4, blocking the check. And now knight takes f1. And this is looking very good for black still, because notice that black has not even down any material. In fact, they're up material, and white's king is still in the center. But I think there's enough confusion in the position that white could still fight from here. It's not a completely done deal. But when you're under a furious attack and your options are uh, pretty limited and none of them are looking too appetizing, it's prime territory for you to make a mistake. So white's been under pressure here, and understandably, they made an error. They played king f3. And this leads to a quick conclusion. So after king f3, black played queen g4 check. Giving up the knight on e3, so king takes e3 is forced. No other moves for the white, white king. But after this, champ delivers a beautiful e paulette mate, queen e4, checkmate. And white's king is mated in the middle of the board. Note that the flight squares d2 and f2 are both covered by white's own pieces. So a nice finale to this one. So I thought that was a neat ending to that. And there's a little of everything in this game. Uh, there was an interesting opening. Um, this is an opening that you see at the club level, and it's pretty popular among players who like to attack this Danish gambit. We saw how black dealt with it with d5, which is a nice move to try to slow white down, giving back one pawn. Uh, and white responded incorrectly. They played e takes d5. And after that, the game could have proceeded normally, and in fact, it kind of looked like it was going to do so. Bishop out to d6, white castled, and black had the option of just castling here. But champ went for this bishop takes h2 Greek gift. And I think every chess player can relate to this type of decision. It's a move that you, you want to make badly. I'm sure champ was well familiar with this tactical theme. Uh, and in the end, they just couldn't resist it. And in fact, it might be okay. As we were analyzing here, if white had played f4, then with best play, the position may resolve to something that's kind of unclear with a material imbalance. So I think a lot of good practical decisions uh, that had to be made by both sides, and that's part of the reason why I picked this game for the first member game analysis. Um, I like this one. So congratulations to Champ on their victory in this game. And I'm going to post the link to the forum thread on chess.com if you're interested in posting your own game. And I'm going to post up my analysis of these games from time to time. So let me know what you think about this one. If you have any questions or comments or corrections about my analysis, feel free to do that in the comments section. And I'll be back again soon, guys, with another video. Talk to you later.
Bye.